get to the semifinals, Morocco makes history as the World Cup fairy tale continues. As a result of eliminating Portugal and Cristiano Ronaldo in the quarterfinals, Morocco has become the first African team to go to a World Cup semifinal. Youssef N. Nassairi scored the only goal in a thrilling 1-0 victory at Al Thumama, keeping Portugal out of the playoffs for the first time in 16 years. Morocco, who had substitute Walid Chedera dismissed late, advanced to a semi-final matchup against either France or England on Wednesday at Albate Stadium, where they will once more have the fervent support of the crowd that helped them defeat Portugal. 1. Morocco shocks Portugal, making history. By becoming the first African or Arab team to make it to the World Cup semi-finals, Morocco dealt a severe blow to African and Arab football. They were just hoping to get to the round of 16 after changing coaches just months before the event and being placed in a group containing Belgium and Croatia, but what they accomplished in Qatar is nothing short of incredible. Just days after shocking Spain in the second round, Portugal's shocking triumph at Al Thumama was played out in a setting filled with loud whistles each time they possessed the ball. And they had a lot of it, touching 80% of the ball at various moments in the game, but Morocco played strong defense, especially in the first took advantage of their opportunities to break fast. And header Nasirai shortly before halftime was made possible by Portugal goalkeeper Diogo Costa's error in coming for a cross that he never went close to, but Morocco was so proficient with the ball when they had it that they completely merited their lead when it did. Despite not having three of their typical back four on the field at the end of the game, Morocco advanced to the semi-finals with just one goal allowed in five games, and even that was an own goal against Canada. After defeating Spain and Portugal, Morocco will be anticipating another surprise against either France or England in the semi-finals. 2. Yehya Atiyatala embodies the soul of Morocco. The fact that Morocco had to select a lineup without Bayern Munich fullback Nasser Mazraoui and West Ham centre back Neyefagerd after they both left the game against Spain injured was a big setback for Morocco. Coach Walid Regragui chose Yehya Atiyatala, a 27 year old left back who has played the majority of his career in Morocco aside from a brief stint in Greece, to replace Mazraoui at left back. Although it appeared to be a significant downgrade on paper, it wasn't. Diogo Dalit, who had assists against South Korea and Switzerland from right back, was pushed by Atiyatala, who was earning just his eighth cap. Atiyatala then moved forwards and crossed the ball for Ennisairai to score just before halftime. After that, Atiyatala nearly made it 2-0 with a lung-bursting sprint from the edge of his own penalty area to finish a quick counterattack. Portugal's right flank has been a strength during the World Cup thanks to Dalit and Bruno Fernandes, and Atiyatala not only eliminated the threat but also posed one of his own. Regragui may have a difficult time making a decision if Mazraoui is healthy enough for the semi-final, but he would probably welcome the challenge. 3. Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal weakened Portugal entered the game having scored three goals on average per game in Qatar, but despite dominating possession of the ball against Morocco, they were unable to convert. For Fernando Santos' team, eight different players have scored in the World Cup, and practically none of them had a bad game at the worst possible time. Joao Felix and Goncalo Ramos both had decent chances, and Fernandez hit the crossbar, but the fluid offensive swagger that had destroyed Switzerland was absent. Although Dalit was a threat from right back against South Korea and Switzerland, he only sporadically found space to advance here due to Bernardo Silva's shoddy passing and Fernandez's frequent encirclement. Although Morocco deserves a lot of credit for making it so difficult for Portugal to produce anything of significance, this was a horrible day for Portugal, who have experienced both good and bad days at this tournament. 
even though Cristiano Ronaldo, who was once again named to the bench, entered the game early in the second half to tie the FIFA record for the most caps by a male player, 196, he was unable to find one more memorable World Cup moment. If this is one of the greatest players in history's final appearance on this platform, it was a very subservient way to leave. When questioned about his choice to bench his captain, Santos responded that even with the benefit of hindsight, he wouldn't change his mind. I think this was a team which performed very well against Switzerland. No regrets, because Cristiano Ronaldo is a fantastic player and was brought in when we felt it was required. Portugal had the talent, but lacked the performance, to make their first semi-final appearance since 2006. What the players and coaches had to say after the game Portugal coach Fernando Santos, it took us a while to get into the game. The guys tried, but they were unable. The truth is that we weren't able to display the full scope of our abilities, despite the players' high levels of confidence and desire. We had no opportunities to score goals. It hurts to leave the World Cup every time. Bilal El Khanis of Morocco says, We feel really thrilled right now. We are the first African team in the semi-final. We did it for all of the Moroccans and for Africa. The game was quite challenging. We were aware of that. We battled for every ball, and we are thrilled with the victory since it is so crucial to our present and future.